All right, in this discussion video, I will continue introducing the classical writings of Ba Gua Zhang. Uh, as was introduced in the previous video on this topic, I introduced the background, the history, and the first verse of the San Shi Liu Ge Jue, or the 36 songs verses. Um, today we will go on to the second of these songs and verses. Uh, some uh, information regarding the content of these two, if we want to look at them in a broad overview. The first one introduced the basic posture, specifically with regards to focusing on the lower body with some information on the upper body. Now this second verse is uh, going more into detail with regard to the posture, but focusing on the upper body. So the second verse starts to give us some more insight and details with regards to the orientation, structure and alignment of the upper body. Um, and it goes into details with regards to energetic aspects as well. The orientation that it's actually uh, referring to is the Tui Mo Chang orientation, which is the millstone pushing palm orientation, the most prominent orientation of the uh, upper body and the arms in Ba Gua Zhang, particularly in circle walking. Some styles of Ba Gua Zhang refers to this orientation of Tui Mo Chang with the term uh, Qin Long Tan Zhao, which means uh, dragon. Qin actually means gold, uh, sorry, green or blue, depending on the translation, kind of turquoisey. Um, and uh, Qinglong is a turquoise blue green dragon. Tan Zhao means to extend its claws. So it's the same kind of idea, extending its claws, but it's the Tui Mo Zhang orientation that it's referring to. All right, let's get into the verse itself. Verse two, the rear elbow is firstly folded, so the elbow covers the heart. Then the hand rolls over with its palm heel extended. It presses ahead towards the lead elbow with a closing and embracing power. The front and rear hands are united in spirit. All right, the first line's instruction tells us that the rear arm, uh, which in the case when you're actually forming the posture, would be the one not extended, the one that's uh, the rear elbow. That's exactly what it's referring to. If we're looking at the center of the circle, uh, the lead arm is the one closer to it, and the rear one is the one further away. But the first instruction it says is that it's folded with the elbow covering the heart. So here you're seeing this idea of bringing the elbow in across the body, covering the heart. Um, and then it says that this hand is overturned basically and extended out towards the other arm. But let's take a look at the, the instruction here with regards to the elbow and the rationale behind it first. Now, as has been explained with Xing Yi Quan classics, Ba Gua Zhang shares a lot of uh, technical characteristics with Xing Yi Quan, and it's quite a prominent and common idea within northern Chinese martial arts. And this is the idea of Zhou Bu Li Lei. Uh, and ha that particular verse within Xing Yi Quan's classics has been covered in a previous discussion. Zhou Bu Li Lei literally means uh, the elbows do not leave the flanks. Now here it's basically reinforcing this. Uh, the instruction here of having the arm folded with the elbow covering the heart is telling you that at all times your elbow should be drawn in close to the ribs and the solar plexus and it should not be splaying outwards. The first reason for this is that it gives you defensive function. As was explained in the previous video on this aspect with regards to Xing Yi Quan, it's logical and practical with regards to defense to have your elbows drawn in. When you have distance from your elbows and your flanks, your ribs, your solar plexus, etc., it leaves openings for uh, attacks to come in, but it also does not unite your structure. So that's the second aspect of why this instruction uh, exists. And that is that by drawing this elbow in, in an embracing power, you have to literally do Han Xiong. Han Xiong means to withdraw and draw and hollow the chest, Ba Bei, round the back. So you're already starting to get this structure with the upper body with that sim simple instruction of drawing the elbow in and extending afterwards. So that's the first instruction is that this is drawn in and it crosses the body. So it has a hugging type of embracing power and it rounds the back, uh, unites the structure. Now, interestingly, my teacher would always talk about this instruction um, and say, look, when you have to put your elbow in front of your heart, which is what uh, the instruction says, um, for males, this is a perfectly functional and useful instruction with regards to maintaining. He said, but due to the anatomy of females, this is sometimes difficult. Um, my teacher doesn't have uh, many female students. I mean, you can probably count the amount of, of women that have 
trained with him over long periods on one hand. There have been a few, but generally martial arts are mostly a male thing. But his instruction is with regards to if you have female students or if you're a female practitioner, how do you adhere to this? Well, in that case, he says the only option they have is not to let the elbow come out to accommodate their anatomy, but rather drop the elbow a little bit lower. So it's not directly over the heart, but it doesn't splay out away from the flanks. And that way you maintain the defensive capabilities of this arm and this structure, uh, irrespective. Just a side note here, any of you that might be interested in that aspect or if it relates to you personally. Now the second line goes on to say, following the orient placing of the elbow over the heart, uh, the hand rolls over with its palm heel extended. Now this word extended gives you some energetic uh, ideas that are very important that needs to be maintained and thought about while you practice Ba Gua Zhang, particularly with this orientation. And that is that the arm, arm is not simply drawn in, which is He, closing in power, but it's extended too. So you've got these two powers that are, uh, that are manifesting at the same time. Um, you'll see if you revisit the Ding Shi Ba Zhang, the fixed posture, eight palms uh, that were introduced, there are a lot of times where different energies that I explain um, manifest at the same time and they're quite important. At times there's three, sometimes more, that you have to pay attention to and manifest while you're doing them. And one of them with regards to Tui Mo Zhang with this orientation is that the arm not only is drawn in but it has to extend. It has to have an extending, expanding power. Now that rationale not only gives a different and a more unified structural integrity to the arm itself, but the extension rounds the back but actually connects the structure of the two arms through the back. And that's quite important as well. Had this arm been slack, uh, there is no connecting tension between this arm around the back, that idea of Tongbei, to the other arm. So these two aspects are quite important, drawing in, he, closing in, and extending. So that instruction in the second line is giving you some insight into how to connect the two arms to one another energetically. Now the third line reinforces this idea by saying that it presses ahead towards the lead elbow with a closing and embracing energy. So here you've got a repetition of what I've just mentioned with regards to the drawing and embracing bow and extension. Now it also gives you some insight onto the placement of the rear hand and that is that it has to extend towards the lead arm's elbow. So that, that, is, um, that is the placement and the intention targeting of your force and your energy when you're doing Tui Mo Zhang is, I'm not going to pay too much attention to this hand, I'm focusing on this hand, but towards this arm's elbow. Now that puts it in a structural alignment in the correct place. Had it been out, you can see what happens with your elbows when you actually draw them away from your flanks um, and how that affects even the placement of this arm. The idea is to coil and twist with those two energies of extending and, brace and embracing towards this elbow. And that's where this hand is placed. And again, this makes sense logically with regards to attack and defense. Had you been in a, whether it's a straight posture, you can see that Lao Sung Tuobo is the same idea, except it just has a different orientation with the palms, but the rest is the same. So the old monk presents the arms ball, which is a very common combat posture in Bagua, has the same requirement, elbow drawn in, but the rear hand is pressing towards the lead hand's elbow. And once again, we see this repeated here. So here we've seen the first few lines explaining the manifestation and placement. So the manifestation of power and contained energies and forces and the placement with regards to the rear hand and how you connect it to the front hand. Now the final line is the front and rear hand are united in spirit. This idea of spirit is talking about intent, focus and energy. Um, and if you pay attention to all the aspects that were presented already up until now, you will manifest this, con this connection between the two arms. I've just explained earlier that drawing this in and extending makes tautness around the back with this embracing power, which allows the connection in terms of a structural integrity around the back and with regards to your, the, the connection in force 
manifest. The two arms are united not only energetically and in alignment, but in spirit too. So your, your mental intent, your yi, has to have this idea at all times that the two arms are actually working together in a unified manner towards a specific goal. In this case, you can extend out and have this intent, literally, that the two arms are one. They're, they're working together to create a unified power that manifests through and around the back, through the upper body, and extends out to a specific targeted area, which is part of the idea of Yi once again. So here you can see it's starting to introduce internal aspects of practice. So it's all fine and dandy to have the external orientation correct. Uh, that would be step one. That would be where you put things. Step two would be the how you put things or how you do things. And that's the energetic, that idea of bao, he, closing in, holding, embracing, and extending. Uh, that's the how you do things. And then finally, the spirit and intention that you must keep in your mind. So these are things that create a more unified practice uh, than if you were just simply focusing on the placement or the orient orientation of something. So, this is the second verse of the Sancha Leo Gurdjie, the 36 songs or verses of Bhagwa Jang. It seems pretty simple and straightforward, but it contains some profound and important messages that you should keep in mind during practice. <laughs> 